You guys are still at the Oak Coast. You are now basically residing on the ship that you, Kane, has renamed the Robert II Electric Boogaloo. So, so what, what is what is Kane's uh, little gnome dude doing? He's been kind of chilling down below. He set up like a miniature cot for himself in the corner, or like a hammocky type of thing. Uh, so he's just kind of chilling in there, relaxing, <laughs> the staff leaning up against the wall. His his goose Robert is uh, is also sleeping in the bunk with him. Speaking of pot, I'm gonna bust out my fucking lady uh, lady bong. Coden leans up to him. If you're running low, man. I'm just, light up. I'm just gonna light up my fucking bong. You light up your bong, make a constitution save, see how stoned you get. Thirteen. Uh, okay, you are barely buzzed. Hey, Odin. Yeah, man. <laughs> puff, puff, give. Odin just takes the bong, no questions, and takes an even bigger hit than Guile uh, just did. Okay, uh, then roll for a constitution save. You take an automatic minus one. A seven. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, no, one. you're obliterated right now. You're, uh, <laughs> he just, like, you're... puffs it out like a magic dragon and just kind of big-ass grin. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. The, the smoke has formed into a dragon-like shape, and it's flying away from him. That's, that's what he's viewing right now. Um, <laughs> he's but, just smiling. No, he's still conscious, though. That he, he, didn't, he didn't do enough to actually knock himself out but he is he is pretty thoroughly inebriated so is uh Malric gonna get it on this i'm going to roll my own shit because i still have some hash on me. <laughs> but i'm going to share a joint with the fucking sailor right yeah. roll constitution uh, i got a 19. you are not thoroughly affected by it um, you <laughs> barely feel it also you <laughs> said you're gonna share it with gertrude yeah all right you're gonna have to bring that up because she's on the bridge you wanna take a, a puff, puff? I love it. And he's gonna try to seduce him. If he wants to do, do it the opposite, I'm gonna I'll seduce her. Roll, roll, roll charisma. Yeah, I rolled seventeen. Uh, yeah, no, you successfully seduced that dwarf. She wants your D. What are you going to do? Also, uh, be aware. Uh, she can probably crush rocks with her hands, so just be aware. I am not afraid. She says that Chiquita. you have no fear. It also Wait, makes her excited. Hey, Chiquita, how about we let these stoners up here and go downstairs and have a little fun of our own? I love it. Oh, so they're downstairs. Yeah, they're downstairs. They're not okay, the same so, so right, right on the deck, fuck it. I guess roll for strength to actually perform this act because I think she's physically stronger than you. I got an eight. I'm getting my dick crushed. You do successfully have satisfying sex with her, although it appears to be far more satisfying for her than for you. You are going to have a mildly sore hip. You will take a minus one to any rolls involving running for the next 24 hours. <laughs> hey, man, grandmama's lead need loving too, man. Don't be ashamed. After the sex, by the way, Gertrude uh, also tells you that you are now her man, and if she sees you sleeping around, she'll kill you. Uh, un un unless it is with Cleric, who she has become friends with. A cleric that has chlamydia. Dwarves can't get chlamydia. No, but Melry can get chlamydia. He's gonna be like Al Capone with syphilis. He's just gonna, he's gonna ride yeah, that shit out. Just Hombre, do you wanna catch super malaria? Bro, in the rainforest and the jungle, there are these little worms that crawl up your dick hole. Yeah, I heard about that too. You gotta like wrap your wang up in a stick, man. I wouldn't go there if I was you. Uh, doesn't Hoden have that guy? That, isn't he supposed to meet that dude back in town? Which, Which dude? dude? Ishmael? You mean, the, you mean the dude that got fucking uh, arrested and we took his shit? No, it wasn't that guy. He's still scouting stuff out. Uh, okay. I say we go pillage a small village and keep the women and children as slaves. We, we hey, don't have any, uh... on Crescent Bay. I'm looking here on the map. It looks interesting, oh. You said Crescent Bay? What's so interesting about a Crescent Bay? Do you know anything about it? Nope. You can, you can roll to see if you know any information about it. All right, let's find out if Hoden knows anything about it. Let's see if Guile knows anything. Nope, Holden rolled an eight again. I rolled a 16. I rolled a four. Okay, uh, Velnos, you know absolutely nothing about it other than the fact that it exists on a map. Um, exactly. <laughs> Raka, uh, you know its location and how to get there, but you don't know very much about the town itself. Uh, Cham, you know that it is a, much like the Oak Coast, it is a fishing town. However, uh, it encompasses almost an entire peninsula all by itself. It is a massive port, and it's also the uh, docking area for the Calgar Navy in the Southern Sea. What's the, uh, the dwarf's name again? Gertrude. So Gertrude. We are going to go to the Crescent. All right there, laddie. It'll take a couple of days. As I slap her ass. Uh, roll for initiative. No, I ain't doing that shit. Roll Dude. for initiative, you slap her ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you, Bob, in this, man. This is all him. 
<laughs> All right, what you roll? I rolled a one. Okay, I rolled an, uh, Gertrude rolled an eleven, so she gets to go first. Uh, this is this is punching. She rolls a five. She misses. Your turn. I rolled a six. Uh, you also miss. She rolled a two. She misses again. <laughs> I rolled a 12. Uh, you very, 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 barely missed. 17, she hits. 5 damage. I rolled an 18. Uh, you do hit. 5. Hey, Malric, I think Guile's getting it on with your woman, man. <laughs> you take your boot and firmly uh, shin kick her right in the groin. She's going to roll to attack. She rolled an 18, she hits. She rolled a 1, so she kind of grazes you a little bit on the chest, and that's about it. It doesn't really hurt all that much. I rolled an 18. Uh, you do hit. I rolled a four. You punch her square in the nose. Uh, her nose is now bleeding. Uh, keep in mind, you guys are now, I mean, even though you've been talking about it, you are also uh, aware of what's going on up top. You can't, dis- uh, you're going to have to roll something to discern whether or not it's a fight or a fuck mess. She rolled a seven. She missed. I rolled a, I rolled a 17. Uh, you do hit. I rolled a 17, my con. Uh, okay, so uh, you rolled a, a, a 17 to discern. You can discern that it's an actual fist fight. Yeah, I'm going to intervene. Okay, uh, so Cham, what did you just roll? That was a hit, and I rolled a three. Okay, so she takes another three damage. You uh, kick her again in the groin. Now what's going to happen is Velnos or Malric has come up from below deck and sees you two fighting. So Malric, you're going to have to try and basically intimidate them to stop, or pers- either intimidate or persuade. I'm going to persuade. Malric is sort of a peaceful guy, and I rolled a 19. Okay, uh, the fight is now over. Cham and uh, Gertrude stop fighting. And uh, Gertrude comes over and fawns all over, uh, all over Malric. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go up to Gertrude's like, give her some, uh, some of my fucking ale. Hey, good job. We got our asses beat. Thank you, laddie. Here, I'll take that. Hang on a second. She then proceeds to chug three gallons of your ale at once and give it back to you. No, I'll chug a gallon as well. Okay, you're gonna have to make a constitution save. I rolled a ten. Uh, okay, you are fairly inebriated. Uh, you probably shouldn't be operating any kind of heavy machinery or get behind the wheel of a car. All right, then, while hey, we're man. heading to uh, to the Crescent, I'm going to go fuck the cleric. The cleric oh, is man. below deck. She appears to be studying a book. Uh, Gertrude goes back to the helm and pulls out of the port uh, to go toward the Crescent Coast. She also informs you that it's probably going to take at least probably a day uh, to get there, so that you should be able to get there probably by the next morning. So I got rolling in to fuck the, the cleric? Uh, you're going to have to ask her to fuck her. She's not just going to bend over for you. Me, you fuck! I'm going to roll persuasion. I rolled a 13. Just for curiosity's sake, in terms of the cleric, uh, what is... Uh, her intelligence is 16 and her wisdom is 8. Uh, she actually has no idea what you're talking about. Uh, in Because ter- her wisdom is 8. So are we fucking or not? You said you rolled a 13, so... Yeah. Alright, she, she's willing to do a quickie. Uh, Gal has chlamydia. I want to see if she catches super aids. So yeah, you were doing a random encounter, so... In the middle of the ocean, Gertrude calls you all up to the deck. She sees another ship approaching. Alright, so we go up there. Alright, so you're gonna have to do a uh, perception roll. I rolled a 9. I rolled a 15. I rolled a 6. Hoden, you see water and sky. Cham. Yeah. Actually, sorry, I stand corrected. Hoden, you see water. Cham, you see water and sky. <laughs> Malric, uh, instead, you notice that there appears to be a small vessel that appears to be made out of, or either painted or made out of some black type of wood. It doesn't look very large, uh, and you can make out what appear to be people on the deck. It looks like it may be a little bit bigger than your, your ship. Los putos, out here in the ocean. Yeah, I'm going to ask Gertrude if she knows anything about it. Okay, Gertrude's going to have to roll with them. Gertrude rolls a four. She doesn't know shit. But that ship does appear to be coming towards you. We should ready ourselves just in case. And I'm gonna go grab my fucking uh my fucking sword. Okay. Fuck it, I'm just gonna prepare for battle. Hoden's gonna keep staring at the water, because he apparently doesn't notice shit. Uh well it appears to be getting closer to you. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna roll uh, for another perception, see if okay. they have ill intent. I rolled a 14. Uh, you notice that the flag flying above it is not a Calgar flag, which means it is probably not a friendly ship. I'm going to roll a wisdom check to gather all this information and determine what it is. And try okay. It. <coughs> and I rolled an 11. Okay. Uh, putting all the information together, you're able to discern that it is probably a pirate ship of some sort. You don't necessarily know who is sailing it or if it is a pirate faction or just a random ship of privateers. You can probably discern that since it's small enough, there probably isn't too many people on the ship. Maybe not too many more than what is on your ship currently. 
and you also discern that there's really no way to get around them because they kind of have the outside taken and try to go inside they might be able to slam you against the shoreline rocks okay so the ship is finally getting close enough to you where you can make everything out it is actually getting very very close to you you think that they're trying to slow down the board uh, Gertrude is trying to uh, basically guide you in so that the ship doesn't get hit, but she doesn't think that you're going to be able to get out of this without a fight at this point. All right, I'm going to yell, uh, prepare for battle. It's going to be charisma. Yeah, it would be charisma, yeah. I rolled a 15. All right, everybody's pumped. You all get a plus one to your attack rolls. Andale, muchachos. <laughs> you see what appears to be orcs coming out of the top of the ship. There's four of They all launch... What? Hooks, basically uh, grappling hooks to pull the ship in uh, so that they can actually board you. Uh, right. I rolled a 14 on this. You rolled a 17? Mm -hmm. 10. So 15. they all have uh, 1d6 for damage. Uh, they're all carry all four of them are carrying swords. And they all just kind of jumped on one side of the ship. Fork number four is going to attack first. He's going to try and attack Cham, but he rolls a three, so he misses horribly. So Cham, it is your turn. I rolled a 16. Okay, you're attacking orc number four. That will hit. I rolled a 12. Total damage. Uh, okay, so uh, orc number four is dead. You cleaved his head off. He had 12 AP. Oh, so his head actually flew off and into the sea. So that's gone. So now it's just an orc corpse sitting there holding a sword. So now that uh, he is down, then we will jump over to orc number two. Uh, now orc number two is going to go after Malred. He rolled a five. So uh, he he missed horribly. So now it will go to you, Belmos. Uh, the one that was attacking me. Okay, so orc number two. I rolled a 12. Uh, that will still hit because their AC is relatively low. Uh, so you can roll for damage on that, whatever is for your rapier. And I rolled a six. Okay, uh, so you stab orc number two uh, through the chest. So you actually have perforated some of his internal organs. He's bleeding pretty badly from that wound. Uh, and you proceed to then rip the sword out. So that's six damage. He's basically at a little below half health. All right. So now it goes to orc number one, who had an 11. So he is going to roll, and he is going to go after Cham. He rolled a 10. He misses. So now it goes down to Raka. All right. So I'm going to go to the one that Belno that's currently focused on <laughs> Belnos. I'm going to go move behind him. All right. So you're going to have to stealth roll before that. All right. So 13. All right, you successfully do that because he's pretty much distracted by, you know, the, the sword that just got ripped out of his chest. And then, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use my rapier and go for a backstab. I rolled a 10. I'm going to say that you hit on that. That is six. You stab him through the other side of his chest and through his heart. He is dead. Uh, he had uh, basically about 11 health. Orc number three is going to go next. He is the next one on the dock. Uh, rolls a nine, so his attack misses. He was going to attack Cham, so that means it would it would go back to Orc number four, but he is very dead. So Cham, you are up. Uh, which one's closest to me? Uh, that would be Orc number three. I rolled thirteen. Uh, that will hit nine. Uh, okay, you do some serious damage to Orc number three. Uh, he tries to block with his sword, but you disarm him by chopping his forearm in half. Uh, so he is no longer armed, literally and figuratively, and uh, he is uh, losing some blood now at this point because you uh, you hit him for a good amount of damage. Belnos is turned now because Orc number two is dead. So uh, Can I throw my dagger at Orc number one and then try to charge him? I'm going to say throwing the dagger is a minor action, so yes. Fucking 19. Oh, yeah, you, you ace that shit. Roll for damage, whatever that dagger is. Uh, three. Okay, you actually hit him right in the eye. Uh, so he is bleeding. He takes three damage immediately to that. He is not, uh, he is in no way, shape, or form diminished in combat effic efficiency, except that he can no longer see out of his right eye. I'm going to charge from his blind spot. Uh, 19 again. Okay, you successfully attack. Roll for damage. I got a five. Uh, the five damage is actually you continuing to immobilize him. Uh, you slip by him on his blind side and you slice at the back of his leg, severing his tendons. He can no longer run around. He is stuck in one spot and cannot attack anything that is not within the immediate vicinity of himself. So that orc is now immobilized. So it is going to try and attack you uh, since you are still relatively close to it. Uh, it rolls a nine and misses, uh, so it is now back down to Raka. So I'm going to ignore the one that Velnos is currently attacking, because uh, 
I okay. kind of stole his kill last time. So I'm going to go after the other one. I'm going to use my crossbow for this one. It's like five? What did you get? You got five? <laughs> yep, no, nope. you, you fire your crossbow, and unfortunately, it, yeah, so it glances off the orc sword. It does no, it does, uh, no damage. I'm going to count that as a minor action. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and shoot another one then. Eight. Uh, the exact same thing happens, and the arrow put, uh, sits right next to the other one. Um, Man, this crossbow is broken. All right, so orc number three, which is still alive, is going to try and attack Cham because it is now his role. Uh, and Cham just sliced off his arm, and he's basically attacking with a fist. And he rolls a six and misses. They can't hit anything. So now it is back up to Cham. That's a 19. You hit. Eight. You cleaved him right in two. He is dead. Um, you put enough energy into that attack where you basically went through his remaining arm and his torso, uh, cleaving him in half. He is just a quivering mass of meat on deck. Belnos, it is your turn. I'm not going to take chances and just stab him in the throat. So yeah, and you got an 18. Uh, okay, that hits. And I got a two. Uh, okay, you stab him enough where he is basically on the verge of death. He collapses to the deck and begs for his life. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm kick him in the face. Okay, roll for attack. Uh, I got a five. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you try to kick him in the face, but you accidentally kick the barrel that's next to where he's lying. So I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there and just cleave his head off. Well, okay, this time you do successfully hit. 14. Yep, uh, you sever his head and it flies off into the ocean. As it's about to hit the water, a massive shark comes up, eats it, swallows it, and swims back down into the ocean. The orcs are now dead, or at least all the ones that boarded the ship. You don't know if there's any more on the other ship. Uh, so you are also orcs. still you also still chained to shed, to said ship. I'm gonna say, hey, let's check out the uh, the enemy ship. I'm gonna jump onto the uh, the ship. I'm gonna roll perception. Gertrude says that she will keep the ship uh, parallel to it and connected while they search. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. I roll a 16. <laughs> I roll a 20. Uh, you notice that it appears to be a traditional orcish design. There's a lot of kind of pointy things all over it. Um, you discern that it appears that it's a small group of privateers. There's probably maybe a couple more orcs on the boat, but not many. Uh, the majority of them probably tried to board your ship. And you think that because you found uh, some expensive things on these orcs, there might be more stuff on that ship. I want to see if there's any more orcs. Okay, you want to you want to yeah. go down in down yeah. under, under the deck of that mm -hmm. ship. Okay. Uh, so is anybody going with him? I'm going. Yeah, okay. I'll go with him. Uh, so you go into the first door uh, that leads down into the kind of the, the cargo deck area, and you see that there appears to be four more orcs that have uh, they don't have armor, so their AC will naturally be ten. They look kind of like general sailors, but they pick up any kind of blunt objects that are near them in preparation for a fight. I rolled a 15. 14. I'm going to make a charisma roll and pull out a bag of weed. He's like, what's <laughs> that sticky icky, man? All right, you're going to make a charisma roll? Make the charisma yeah. roll. 13. You make a 13. Okay, orcs are incredibly stupid, so I'm going to make a counter roll for the group of orcs to see if they uh, can smell that you're you're just doing this so that they, you don't have to deal with uh, fighting with them. Uh, they don't realize it. So they uh, are interested in your offer and approach. Yeah, man. There's plenty to go around. How much you guys want? It's 15 a gram. Let's do this. I don't know what this is. So, really so, so I'm guessing Whoa. combat is out of the option? Uh, it, I mean, Let's you can still play. try and kill them. They're going to be oh. off guard at this point, so it'll be a surprise attack for you. I'm going I'm to persuade the, uh, the orcs. To do Home what? Won't care either way as long as he gets well, to, uh, to be our sailors to help uh, sail the ship. Okay, roll for perception. Uh, I mean, roll for uh, charisma. Oh, Seventeen. They agree in a sense. Well, uh, here's here's the thing that they basically say that there's more of them on the ship, but the more of them on the ship are the ones that boarded your ship, so they're not the brightest bunch. Uh, so they don't realize that all their friends are dead. Uh, so they basically t say that they will never work for anybody as. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna tell them up front, like, hey, we killed them. Oh, yeah, man. So, yeah, who about those guys, man? They came on our ship. I tried to sell them my sticky, but they thought it was poison. All right. You tell the orcs that you killed all their friends. Uh, their reaction is not a good one. Um, it's extreme anger. Uh, return to your initiative. Whatever you rolled was correct. So, Cham, you rolled a 15. Rolled 15 yeah. uh, 14. God damn, uh, 13. <laughs> God damn, I tried. Yeah, why did you tell them we killed their friends? I could have had a, we. I could have just got them high. 
and they could have just agreed to everything. We could have told them their friends left. Once they get on the ship, they're not going to they not believe it when they see uh, the fucking bodies. Tell them they're asleep. It's good weed. Dude, <laughs> decapitated two of them? Oh, we just act like that's not going on and they're tripping. The order of combat is going to be Orc number four, Cham, Velnos, Raka, Orc number one, Orc number three, Orc number two. So Orc number four is going to roll first. He is going after Cham because Cham is the one that he assumes killed most of his friends. He rolls a 16. He hits. He rolls a four for damage. Uh, so now, Cham, it is your turn. And I rolled a 10. No, that he doesn't hit. That will hit 10. because his AC is in the dirt. He has, the, yeah. he has, no, uh, yeah. he has no armor, so that will hit. Uh, that'll be a nine. Uh, okay, orc number four is very, very, very damaged. He proceeded to lop off one of his legs. So basically all he's doing right now is hopping around with one stump and waving a sword at you. Uh, Velnos, it is now your turn. Uh, orc number two would be closest to you. All right, I'm going to attack him. So you rolled a 20? Yeah. All right, so whatever you roll for damage is credit. Uh, I'm going to use the rapier to stab him, and I rolled a six. Orc number two, you stab him right through the skull. He is dead as fuck. Uh, so you will gain an extra 15 uh, HP from, or uh, XP from that. All right, and uh, Raka is the next one on the list to go. All right, well, I'm going to be the typical sneaky thief and go for the one that's already damaged. All right, roll for stealth. Well, <laughs> nope, I failed that shit. Twos, man. I failed so I failed stealth, but I'm still going to swing at him. Dude, are you serious? What'd you roll? A two? <laughs> uh, you flail your sword around in the air in front of him, but don't actually touch him. <laughs> On guard, man. You totally missed, so that means it goes down to orc number one. So he is of the one of the undamaged orcs. Uh, he goes for Cham. He rolled a five, so he misses miserably. Uh, orc number three is going to go. He is also undamaged. He is going to attack Malric. Uh, he rolls a 14, which does hit. Yep, he rolled a two. I'm sort of half dead. Yeah, you, you basically, he, he stabbed you in the... Actually, sorry, no, it will go to uh, oh. work for... He rolls a 12, he barely, barely misses, goes to Cham. He's the one that just stabbed me, Orc. Uh, oh, the yeah. one that just stabbed you? Okay, that was uh, Orc number one. That, that is currently on damage. All right, so that was a 15. Yeah, that will hit. That's a 14. Uh, that Orc is fucking dead. You cle- oh. He only had 12 health. You cleaved him in half. He goes now to Belno, so the Orc that you ju- were just being attacked by is now dead. All right, I'm going to attack the undamaged orc. I'm going to do the same routine from last time and throw the dagger so then I can charge. Okay, throw the dagger with a dexterity roll. 18. Uh, you do hit, so you can roll your damage die for that. Four. You you hit him kind of on the lower part of the neck, so he's, he's bleeding pretty badly from that area. He's going to take one HP damage per turn uh, no matter what happens, if, even if he's not attacked because he's bleeding out. Uh, now you can use your primary action if you'd like. All right, I'm just going to stab him with a rapier. And I rolled an 8. AC is 10. You yeah. do manage to hit him. I rolled a 5. So you did 5 damage to him, so you stab him uh, through the chest, and he's bleeding pretty bad. He can still stand, he can still fight. All right. Uh, so now it goes down to Raka. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go for Goblin 3, but I'm going to do my Ritual of Stealth roll first to get behind him. That was an 11. Uh, you successfully do it because he's very occupied with uh, Belmas. That was a 13. You do hit. So that is 14 damage total. Okay, you do the Zoro thing again, but instead of just doing it wildly in the air, you actually slice up most of his internal organs and kill him horribly. Uh, so now it is only Orc 4, um, and Orc 4 is going to try and attack Sham again. Oh my god, he rolled a nat 20. He rolled a nat 20, so he's still going to be able to attack you with the sword. Um, he rolls a 3. Uh, how much health do you have left? Fucking 6. Yeah, that would be doubled, so it's going to be 6. So you're going to have to roll uh, a d20 to make sure you don't slip into unconsciousness. And that's a 16. Okay, you successfully stay awake, uh, but you are pretty much in a comatose state for right now. Roll a d20 again to see how many hours before you can get up again. 17. 17 hours is when you're going to be able to actually move around again and do stuff. Uh, until then, you are pretty much in a comatose state. The other guys are going to have to move you. Or you can get Gertrude to do it. She, she, she's a burly woman. She can carry you, Sonny. Uh, so, instead of going to Cham, then it now goes to Belnos because of that attack. I'm going to try and I'm going to attack uh, Orc number four. Orc number four is not going anywhere. He's still hopping around on his one leg. Uh, 14. You do hit. 
I rolled a two. Uh, that is more than enough to kill him. He only had two health left. Uh, the four orcs that are on the lower deck are all dead. Cham is in a comatose state, um, and you guys are victorious, so you can uh, loot the corpses, or you can you know, choose to do whatever you want with Cham. I'm going to rescue Cham first before we worry about the corpses. Okay, you're going to have to roll a strength check to actually carry him back to the ship. You rolled a nat 20? <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, you successfully get him back to the ship, and you also have successfully healed him for 3 HP somehow through your through, through your amazingness at carrying things. Um, <laughs> you leave him in the capable hands of the cleric, you are now stabilized and no longer have to worry about dying every couple of hours. Odin follows up, god damn, the Migos are fishy, bro. Doing a charisma check to see if she'll blow you. <laughs> Fuck it! All right, do it. You're, you're conscious, so... <laughs> 15. Uh, she does. <laughs> Although, because uh, of your kind of half comatose state, you can only kind of half enjoy it. Uh, so, you can also search the rest of the ship, because that is just one of the decks, but you can also tell that there's really nobody else on the ship. Perception check to search the ship. Same. Okay, roll. You got a 12. Raka, you got... Five. Uh, all right, Raka, you do find that they have some dry goods provisions, enough for at least another three or four weeks. Trey ships, because we're on a fishing ship. There is no be- damage to the other ship, and Gertrude would still be able to pilot it. The only place that you haven't looked is the uh, the ca- quote-unquote captain's quarters, which is the, the, the main room. That's the only room on the ship that you haven't checked. It, it has a locked door. All right, uh, I'm going to try and open that door. Oh, you, okay, you're going to pick the lock, yep. Oh god, okay, you got it, Swan. <laughs> you successfully managed to open the door almost without even touching it. Uh, it literally falls in and uh, and just opens up for you and almost welcomes you into the room. Um, inside the room, you find that there appears to be a desk with multiple drawers, uh, some kind of a map sitting on the desk uh, table. I'm going to search the room just in case something is there, but cautiously. Roll the search. And I rolled a 14. <laughs> find that apparently there was some kind of a, an order being processed. These orcs were one of several in what seems to be some kind of a, a joint pirating fleet or something like that. They, they work together and they would uh, come together at this one spot. You know of the area where maybe their treasure stash is. 